times, a vicar is hoping to lift the spirits of Londoners by offering a mobile church service in response to the coronavirus crisis. Pat Allerton has been dubbed the portable priest and he's visiting residential streets in the capital to deliver prayers and hymns through a loudspeaker during mass closures of places of worship. The vision is to go around the different streets in the parish, starting with the Portobello Road right here. Hi, my name's Pat Allerton. I'm the vicar of St. Peter's Notting Hill, uh, but I'm also known as Portobello Priest. So the thought came to me that if people can't go to church, then church should go to the people. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of Twilly Street. I hope you'll forgive me interrupting your afternoons. You know, people come to their windows, they come to their doorways, uh, they perhaps come out to their front gardens. They're socially distanced, you know, we're very careful on that. But it gives people a real sense of community in these difficult times when everyone's feeling separated, disjointed, just divided from one another. This is a chance to have some community spirit, at the very least to sing a song together. <laughs> I've been doing it uh, simply to bring hope and to bring a moment of joy and peace to people who are in lockdown, who are isolated, who are perhaps feeling lonely or anxious or, or fearful. I think that's going to be the challenge in the days and the weeks ahead is to keep our spirits up, keep our heads up. I've visited Charing Cross, St Thomas's and Chelsea and Westminster and I think it's had a positive, I can only hope it's had a positive response. Today is Easter Day, which is the most important day in the Christian calendar. I'll be going out and about um, in the parish and, and nearby, hopefully um, playing an Easter hymn and leading people in prayer to bring a bit of joy, to bring a bit of hope and good news at an incredibly challenging time. Hey, Pat, good to see you. Hey, Marcus. Yeah, good to be with you. <laughs> so um, you're famous now. Am I? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no one told me that. Um, uh, or if I am, it's, very, it's only very much in a sort of minor Christian celebrity way, which we know isn't the real deal. So uh, we've just seen a little piece of kind of what you're up to and what you're doing. And um, for the folks here at Ascension, I mean, what, like, why is it connecting? What's going on here? I don't know. I just, I'm amazed because when I first did it, you know, and just thought I'll head into my parish on the Portobello Road. I used to be known as the Portobello Priest and the media renamed me the, the Portable Priest. But... I didn't know whether I'd get sort of rotten tomatoes or told to, you know, get lost, you know, which has happened once or twice. <laughs> but um, I was amazed by the sort of ripple of applause, like people loved it. I think at the end of the day, you know, it's a beautiful piece of music, Amazing Grace, and no one can sort of come against it too strongly. And it's, music does bring people together. And in, in this weird time where people are disconnected, it is a, a moment where the sort of community, the, the street or, or whatever can, can come together, even briefly. And so you see people waving at each other from, you know, outside their windows or doorways, you know, seeing their neighbours perhaps for the first time in, in days or weeks. And so there's an openness to it. But I also think just with what's going on and the challenges and emotions that are sort of being stirred and, you know, the reality that, you know, sickness and death is being put on our doorstep. It's the valley of the shadow of death from Psalm 23. I think there's a sort of openness mm. to something more that there isn't normally in our culture. You know, normally our culture is running away from thinking about death. They can't escape it right now. You know, it's, it's the reason we are in our homes. It's the reason we're two meters apart. Mm. So there's a sort of what I'm experiencing is a strange, and it can only be the Lord, favor on this where people just even if they've got no faith at all and i'm always speaking to those people and saying look you might not have faith that's fine I'm not pushing this on you but i think even they are like recognizing do you know what this is a good thing and it's a positive thing and it's at the very least it's bringing this community together and it's bringing a, a little bit of hope and raising our spirits and i think they recognize this is me conjecturing you know but they recognise, yeah, this is the, this is what the church should be doing, yeah. And I applaud that, even if I think it's complete nonsense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I think um, it's interesting. You mentioned the kind of amazing grace bit of it, and yeah, this morning, as part of our service, we've been reflecting on grace, and there was a real moment of grace I felt um, 
that you were telling me about. Can you tell us about the Charing Cross, Charing Cross Hospital um, episode? Yeah, so, I mean, I'd done a number of streets and it was, you know, a few people had heard about it. And then a friend of mine said, look, why don't you go to the hospitals? And I was just like, in that moment, I was like, yes, that's absolutely right. You know, that's where the hope is needed most. You know, people on their own, isolated and dying, you know, it, in these places without family, without contact, without chaplains even. It's just horrific. And I just thought, oh, the chance to play this song and for the idea of this music making its way down the corridors into the wards and bringing a bit of hope. Um, I just thought we've got to go there. So I headed off to Charing Cross Hospital, the first place I went. And, you know, these hospitals are massive and they sort of feel so impersonal because from the outside, because it's a con contained environment, you know, it's not like they've got all their windows open. All the windows are shut. It just looks impregnable. But I turned the volume up, <laughs> give ourselves the best chance, and did the thing, and played the song and led the prayers, seemingly to a fortress, and didn't know if anyone sort of had heard it, other than the neighbours on the street. And actually that, randomly, someone on that street, without seeing us or me, stepped out and recorded it with Charing Cross and put it on the, their Facebook with 130 friends or something. And it got watched 5 million times. So <laughs> wow. that's, crazy. that's just an aside. But we did it at Charing Cross, packed up, left. And I was with a friend, actually, who, you know, he's got a few followers on Instagram, his um, fiance, and they put it out, they filmed it. And they got some messages which they then forwarded to me. And this is like, it's been the highlight really and this is why i felt called to do it and this is why i've continued to do it, to do it because i got uh this message i got a couple of messages the first was this from a nurse um the message said i was doing a shift yesterday in charing cross hospital and heard this and i was bawling crying at the time i was in a side room with a patient who was sadly coming towards the end of her life due to her not being able to fight the battle with covid19 I cannot thank you enough for the peace that this song brought me and that patient at that difficult time. And then a, another message which I found in a weird Facebook file, you know, from people you don't know, so you never know where they go. But I found that 10 days later it said, Hello, I am not a religious person, which I love, but I wanted to thank you for what you did on Thursday night outside Charing Cross Hospital. My uncle was in there at the time and passed away alone the following morning due to coronavirus. Knowing he could have heard this on his last night on this planet brings tears to my eyes and warmth to my heart. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I've just had so many messages and posts on Instagram, like people- Wow, that's brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I, yeah. I shared that on Radio 2 with Adrian Charles and I was choking up, could barely get the word. He was just like, it, that's, People need hope, and it's seeing the responses from people outside the church that's so warming that they they love it. They're like, I'm I'm in tears, I'm crying, I've got goosebumps. You know, that's beautiful. It's like there's a window, I think, for the church. And my encouragement, my hope is just the, for the church to find, you know, for us to find our voice at this time. You yeah. know, we've got not a message of hope. We've got the message of hope. You know, the only message where death has been defeated. Hmm. What are people's greatest fears? It's death. And yeah. if you've got an answer to that, well, you, you know, you're sorted. Brilliant. Pat, um, we're going to pray for you, and then I'd love us for you to pray for us at Ascension that, um, yeah, we'd receive that grace afresh and be people who can breathe out that grace upon others. Uh, what would you like prayer for? Because obviously... You know, it's crazy times for you right now. Yeah, I mean, it has been. And it's like, I don't know what the future of... I think prayer for just me to continue to hold it lightly. Like, I just recognize this is, this is not my doing. This is the Lord's doing. He's using it. And I just want to be his, his vessel, his servant, his son. And I, I love doing it. I, you know, it's, I'm a preacher. I felt called at 18 to tell the world about Jesus. And I feel I'm living in my daydream, but I want to hold it lightly. I don't want to make it an idol or, you know, try and force it or push it. And I just want to say, Lord, if you're done with it, so be it. But 
if there's more, Lord, I'm here, I'm ready to go. And just to, just to stay responsive and keep following the Spirit's lead um, and obedient to him. So Brilliant. grace to do those things and for him to open the doors he wants and for it to the message, you know, the gospel and hope in Jesus to, to reach people as the Lord wants to use it. That would be great. Brilliant. Well, we're going to pray. And uh, why don't you at home just stretch out hand as well as a way of symbolically saying, yeah, we want to bless Pat now. Father God, we thank you for Pat, Lord. We thank you for that dream you put on his heart at the age of 18 to preach your word to many, many people. And here we are years later and you're doing it. You've brought that to pass. And thank you that, as Pat says, we have the message of hope, not a message of hope. And Lord, thank you for the amazing grace that is being poured out through him to many, many people, millions of people at this time, Lord. And so we want to pray uh, for continued favour upon him and upon this. And thank you that uh, Pat's heart is to just keep giving you all the glory. And Lord, we, we pray that um, he'd keep doing that. And uh, to use the expression that he's mentioned to me, that uh, as the wind keeps blowing, so he'll keep the kite up in the sky on this. And that your name would be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, and I just thank you so much for all the folks um, at Ascension Ballon, Lord, and for Marcus and his leadership of that church. And just want to lift them to you, Father, and just pray that you would just pour out your spirit on every member there, Lord. Just ignite that first love for you afresh. Lord, just put a fire in their hearts as they, as they look to you, as they feed on your word, as they seek you in prayer and worship. And Lord, would you just release fresh callings? Lord, fresh, just creative, innovative, missional ideas, Lord, from heaven, for that community, for that church, for their mission, um, out into the world, Lord. Would you just anoint them? And would there be just stories of, of many lives, many, many people being touched, being impacted by that church community, um, being salt and light, Lord? And I just pray your blessing on Marcus in particular, Lord, as he leads them. Lord, thank you for the leader he is, Lord. Thank you for the gospel man he is, Lord, the, the man of grace who has just received that free gift you've given all of us in Jesus, Lord. And we just pray that you would just take him deeper in the things of the Spirit, Lord, and in, in your word, he would love you more and love those people more. So just bless him, bless Ascension, Lord. And we just, we just say, come, Lord Jesus. Come and bring revival at this time in our city and in our nation and around the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pat. That's just brilliant. I feel really inspired. Uh, and uh, keep going. Keep doing it. We love you lots. And uh, see you soon. Thanks, Marcus. God bless. God bless, guys. Cheers. Yeah.